from the mercy of Allah upon us and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his servants, Allah azza wa jal gave us signs, signs in which they'll occur and emerge before the day of judgment. And Hudayfa ibn Yamani says, while we are sitting down in one of the gatherings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he asks us, what are you discussing? What are you talking about? So they said, oh messenger of Allah, we are talking about the day of judgment. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, well the day of judgment will not emerge. The day of judgment will not occur until you see 10 major signs. And amongst those 10 major signs is what the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam speaks in this hadith until you experience the Dajjal Antichrist, al Masih Isa ibn Maryam, the return of Isa Jesus, the son of Mary, Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, Gog and Magog. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam speaks about the Dukhan, the smoke, and then the beast. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam says about and speaks about the sun rising from the west. And then he says alayhi salatu wa sallam, three landslides, one in the east, one in the west, one in the Arabian Peninsula. And then the last one that will occur is a fire that will come out in Aden, Yemen, that will force people to the place of assembly before the day of resurrection. Ten major signs. Ten major signs which are connected to one another. As the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says in another hadith, that are like beads in a string or a necklace. If you cut it, all the beads will start falling one after the other. And that's how the ten major signs will occur. The moment one of them will occur, then the others and the other ones will follow. And we don't know the order and the sequence of those ten major signs besides three. That the Dajjal will occur and after that, al Masih Isa ibn Maryam, the return of Isa ibn Maryam. Then after Isa ibn Maryam, it will be the advent and the appearance of Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, Gog and Magog. The Prophet Sallallahu tells us also in Muslim that any one of these signs, if they appear, there is no more repentance. There is no more repentance. You can't make tawbah anymore. The rising of the sun from where it sets. The Dajjal when he arrives. And Isa ibn Maryam when he descends. And also there is another hadith about the fourth one. Adab. There is a beast that comes out of the earth. There is no more repentance. You can't make tawbah anymore. And yet Juj wa Ma'juj, those two tribes or nations, are also being mentioned in the Bible and the Old Testament. So we share the same knowledge, maybe in some differences and understanding of it with the Jews and the Christians. Gog and Magog. Strange wordings. There are actually two words. Ya'juj is one and Ma'juj is another. And, in, and when you say it in Arabic, for an Arab who listens to that word, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, it's a very harsh and you know, coarse word. It comes from the root word of Ujaj, to be dry, to be dry and to be harsh. And it also comes from the meaning Al-Aj, meaning when the enemy comes really fast, close to you really fast, comes, attacks you really quickly. So these Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are dry and harsh in nature. And when they come out, they're going to come out so quickly and so fast that you will not be able to stand in front of them. You have to run away from them. That's what the scholars tell us about these meanings. And Gog and Magog are two nations from the progeny and the offsprings of Adam. So they are human beings. They're not these big beasts and monsters as we grew up thinking. They are these two gigantic people with one eye and so on. And they are so big in their multitude. They are so humongous in their numbers. That the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says in one hadith that once one of them dies, leaves behind 1,000 of his offspring. So you could imagine the number of these people. Another hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he says that Ya'juj wa Ma'juj are 400,000 nations. So there are two nations divided into 400,000 nations. And he says alayhi salatu wasalam, each time one of them dies, leaves behind an offspring of over 1,000 men carrying the sword. That's how dangerous they are. That's how corrupt they are. And that's how fearful they are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of them in the Quran al-Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to that in Surah Al-Kahf, the story of Dhul Qarnayn, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ Dhul Qarnayn O Muhammad, they ask you about Dhul Qarnayn. And Dhul Qarnayn means the one with the two horns. He was called that name because he used to wear a hat that had two horns coming out of it. Then Allah Azza wa Jal continues and he says, قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرَى Well, I shall tell you more about Dhul Qarnayn and the story of Dhul Qarnayn. 
Dulqarnain was a righteous, just ruler. He is not a prophet, nor that he is a messenger. He is a righteous ruler, a righteous, just leader. Dhulqarnayn was an extremely powerful king and he was a worshipper of Allah, a righteous, just Muslim king among the best that ever existed on earth. He was a Muslim before the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as all prophets and messengers came with one religion, one call and that's the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commands of Allah. Dhulqarnayn was a Muslim, a righteous, just ruler that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him strong establishment and power and strength on the surface of this earth in which Allah Azza wa says inna makkanna lahu fil ard we had established him firmly established him upon this earth firmly established him and strongly established him on the surface of this earth wa atainahu min kulli shay'in sababa so not only we strengthened him and not only we established him but then Allah Azza wa says and we gave him a way and means of everything so Allah Azza wa Jal established him strongly on the surface of this earth and Allah gave him power, Allah gave him authority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him strength. فَأَتْبَعَ سَبَبًا Allah Azza wa Jal says and he followed away. He continued obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and establishing the commands of Allah on the surface of this earth. Then Allah tells us about his journey on the surface of this earth. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةٍ وَوَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا قَوْمًا Until he went towards where the sun sets. So his journey went towards the west, then the east, then he had his first encounter with the tribe and the nation of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So he went towards where the sun sets and Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about Dhul Qarnayn, his attitude and approach and his principle of his leadership, his principle of leading and ruling, Allah Azza wa says, قَالَ أَمَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ فَسَوْفَ نُعَذِّبُهُ ثُمَّ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا نُكْرًا Those who are, he transgress against themselves, those who do wrong, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to Dhul Qarnayn, he says that we will punish them, penalize them in this world, and then we'll leave them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue punishing them a severe punishment. وَأَمَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُ جَزَاءً الْحُسْنَةً But those who do good, those who uphold goodness, those who do righteousness, Dhul Qarnayn says, then we will reward them, we'll give them retribution, we'll give them reward. وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا حُسْنَةً And we shall speak to them and say to them goodness. ثُمَّ أَتْبَعَ سَبَبًا After he went towards the west, he moved on and went towards the east. Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about this journey. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَطْلِعَ الشَّمْسِ وَجَدَهَا تَطْلُعَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ لَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِيَا سِتْرًا Until he reached all where the sun rises from. He reached all the way to the east where the sun rises from. He had an encounter. He encountered and met people that they had no cover from the sun. And some of the scholars say they were naked. So they used to operate at night and sleep during the day because they had no clothing or garments. Allah Azza wa Jal continues to say, كَذَلِكَ وَقَدْ أَحَطْنَا بِمَا لَدَيْهِ خُبْرًا We had encompassed him with more knowledge. That's the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's sending and revealing upon Dhul Qarnayn. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ بَيْنَ السَّدَّيْنِ وَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمَا قَوْمًا لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ قَوْلًا After he went to the west and then he went to the east, he went just not far away from the east in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says until he reached the what's between the two mountains. So there were a range of mountains and there was a gap. There was a gap in between the range of mountains. He met with people that he could not communicate well with. As Allah says in the Quran Kareem, قَوْمًا لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ قَوْلَ They don't understand any speech. So he had an interpreter to interpretate with them. قَالُوا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ They complained to the Qarnayn. And they complained to him about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Those two nations. Those two big corrupt nations. And they said, إِنَّ يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ مُفْسِدِونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Ya'juj and Ma'juj are causing so much mischief and corruption on the surface of this earth. They eat anything they want, they take anything they want, they kill whomever they want. فَهَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرْجًا عَلَىٰ أَن تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ سَدَّةً So they made a proposal to Dhul Qarnayn. They said, O Dhul Qarnayn, we are making an offer to you. 
that you help us to block them, put them inside that mountain, and get rid of their mischief and their corruption. Sadul Qarnain, this righteous and pious leader, he says, قَالَ مَا مَكَّنِّ فِيهِ رَبِّي خير. What Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon me from strength, power, and authority is better than what you are trying to offer me. It's better than what you are trying to give me. فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةِ أَجْعَلْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ رَدْمًا what I need from you in return, that you assist me and help me in creating a barrier, in creating a wall, a dam, that we could block them inside the mountains, and then we could get rid of their corruption and mischief. Atuni Zubar al Hadid. So he put a strategy together. How is he going to get rid of Ya'juj or Ma'juj, Gog or Magog, and block them inside the mountain? So his strategy was that he gets an iron, plates of iron and he puts them over each other. So the first thing he did, he pushed them inside the mountains, and then he got plates of iron, and he put them over each other. And some of the scholars said that he put wood in between each plate. So he burnt it, and then he made it melt over one another until it became a strong wall. After that, he did not just stop at creating this iron wall. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Hatta idha ja'alahu naran, qala atuni ufriq alayhi qitra. After this wall of iron, of metal, became so strong, so stiff, so consolidated, he consolidated it with copper, with melted copper that he melted it over the iron. So he had iron, then at the top of the iron he put melted copper, and then he made it a very powerful withstanding wall that blocked the people of Ya'juj or Ma'juj, Gog or Magog, from climbing from above it or penetrating through it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says فَمَسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَ They could not go over it, nor they could peace, or nor they could penetrate through it. First of all, the Ajuj and Ajuj are unable to get out of there. Number one, there are many reasons why. Number one, as we said before, they are very primitive people. Their understanding of technology is not like ours. They don't know what's going on in the world right now. They don't, they don't have computers, they don't have airplanes, they don't have these weaponry we have. They have nothing. Remember the people who say, who said to, to Madhul Qarnayn, please protect us from them. And they were primitive themselves. Well, the Ajuj and are even more primitive than them. So they don't have the idea of technology of how to you know, break through this wall. And they are between mountains. These mountains are covered with such bad climate that if they try to go up these mountains, they'll die. So they can't go around or on top of this wall. Some people said this wall is the Great Wall of China. No, it's not the Great Wall of China. Well, the Great Wall of China is broken. You can easily pass through it and on top of it's a tourist um, you know, site. The Ajuj and Ajuj are not behind the Wall of China, nor are they the Chinese people. A lot of people, they say, oh, they're the Chinese people. And some people, they describe them as being short. They're like midgets walking around. Oh, and then they've got these strange eyes. And about if, uh, This is all rubbish, you know. There's nothing in the Hadith that states that they are like that. And where is that wall? And where is that mountain? We don't know where it is. No one knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Dhul Qarnayn looked at the people, they looked at this wall and they said, wow, this is a very strong wall. And Dhul Qarnayn wanted to teach them a lesson. Finally, he said, Qala hadha rahmatun min Rabbi. He said, this is from the mercy of my Lord. What's the mercy here? That he allowed us to prevent you from the corruption of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. But then, but then, Allah Azza wa Jalla clearly states in the Quran al-Kareem, until the command of Allah and the promise of Allah comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy that wall and then Ya'juj or Ma'juj will come out to people once again. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَيْلٌ لِلْعَرَبِ مِنْ شَرٍ قَدْ اقْتَرَبْ Woe unto the Arabs, the day of judgment is coming near and there is a hole that's been created in the wall and the dam of Ya'juj or Ma'juj and it's only a matter of time where Ya'juj or Ma'juj will penetrate through that dam and wall and they come out to people. Then Zainab radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, afanahliku wa fina salihun. He said, Will we be destroyed? And among us there are still righteous people. Yani, when he said Ya Juj and Majuj, it's basically saying that the end of the world has come very near. Allah is going to destroy the world. So the Zainab radiallahu anha says, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to be destroyed so, so soon? And still among us there are righteous people. There's you, there's the Sahabas, there's all these righteous people whom Allah praised in the Quran. Qala na'am. He said, Actually, yes, you can be destroyed while righteous people are among you. He said, if the righteous people will be destroyed among the non-righteous people, if on one condition, when indecency and immorality spread too much. 
It's too much of it. Allah will destroy the people, including the righteous people among them. There are two definitions to this or interpretations. Number one, either because the righteous people are not doing their job or the corruption has exceeded so much that the righteous people cannot do any more. So it's time to take them away. The test of the world is pointless. Take them, start judging them, put whoever's in heaven and whoever goes to hell, hellfire. Pointless now to live on. That moment will come in which from the time of the Qarnain till our day, from the time of the Qurnain till our days now, they've been trying to penetrate and peace through the wall, peace through the dam. And every single day, they try and dig through the dam, dig through the wall, until they start seeing the ray and the sunbeam coming through these small holes they've been digging through. And then they'll say to themselves, let's go and rest. Let's go and rest and come back the following day and start digging through that wall. So they'll go and rest. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the wall go back as strong as it used to be before they start digging into it. Then they'll come again and they'll start digging through the wall and digging through the dam until they start seeing the sunbeam. And then they'll say, let's come the following day and continue digging. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the wall go back the way it was before they were digging. Until that day they will dig and dig and dig until they see the ray of the sun and see the sunbeam and then they'll say let's come back tomorrow inshallah by the will of Allah and continue digging at that moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it the way they left it and then they'll dig and dig and then they'll penetrate through it this is the hadith of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ Until that moment comes, which is that moment before the day of judgment, Allah refers to and He says فُتِحَتْ يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ And the dam in which يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ Gog and Magog are blocked in, it will be penetrated, it will collapse and then يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ They'll swarm out on earth, they'll come out from every corner. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he says that when يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ come out, they'll take over the entire earth, they'll dominate the entire earth. And when they come out, they just destroy. They destroy, rob, rape, kill, murder, all of these things. They'll come out after Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, the son of Maryam, the son of Mary, after he kills and destroys Antichrist. That moment Allah will inform Isa and the believers and the Muslims surrounding him that I had sent out a nation in which Allah is referring to Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. No one can withstand against them. No one can face them. No one can fight them. And Allah will reveal to Isa to go to the Tur, to a mountain nearby Jerusalem, where Isa alayhi salam and and the believers will resort to the mountain of Tur and stay at the mountain of Tur awaiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. At that moment, as I mentioned to you before, Ya'juj wa Ma'juj will flock and swarm the entire earth. They'll be in large numbers. They'll destroy everything in front of them. They'll eat anything they want. They'll kill whoever they want until they reach to the lake of Galilee, the lake of Tabariya in Palestine. They'll drink it all. They'll drink the entire lake. This lake is enough for four or five nations at this current moment. But Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, Gog and Magog, they'll drink the entire water in that lake and leave nothing for those who come after them. That the last, or those who come later on from Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, they'll come to that lake and say, wasn't there water in that lake? They've drank it all. And then they'll destroy anyone on the surface of this earth. The only ones that will survive is Isa alayhi salam, Jesus the son of Maryam, Mary and his followers in which they will resort and in which they will hide on the top of the mountain of Tur. There's another hadith that says when they come out, they will fight the people of the, anyone in front of them, they'll kill them. So there will be non-Muslims that they'll be hiding. They won't kill everyone. Yeah, Juj wa Majuj will start having this pride. We've dominated what's on earth. We've taken control of what's on earth. Now, let's dominate what's in the heavens. So they'll start shooting with their arrows up in the air. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their arrows come back stained with blood. So when they see the, when they see the blood on their arrows, they see stains of blood on the arrows, they'll say, we have dominated what's on earth and we've taken control of what's in the heavens. Allahu Akbar. Isa alayhi salam, along with the believers on the mountain of Tur, hiding there and resorting there, trying to protect themselves from the evilness and the corruption of Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. They'll be listening to the sounds and the noises of Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. They're so corrupt, they're so loud, they're so evil. They're so evil. While Isa alayhi salam and the believers on the mountain of Tur, they'll be struggling to eat anything. 
that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, a head of an ox, a head of a buffalo or a bull will be worth hundreds of dinars. These days people chuck it, dispose it. They would not even make any use of it. But at that time, because of that moment and predicament that Isa alayhi salam and the believers will endure and face, they'll be on the peak of the mountain of Tur and they have nothing to eat. They'll be struggling. They'll be suffering. فَيَرْغَبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عِيسَى وَأَصْحَابَهِ Then Isa alayhi salam and his companions will start supplicating to Allah. They'll make dua to Allah because they'll be in such a hard time. Until that moment where Isa and the believers will stop hearing noises. They'll stop hearing sounds. And one stage, all that he sounds, sounds of war, sounds of people screaming. And then suddenly, there's no sound, there's no voices. So Isa alayhi salam will ask one of the believers around him to nominate himself and volunteer to come down from the mountain and to check up to see what's happening, to see what it's, what's exactly happening on earth. So one of those youngsters who follows Isa alayhi salam and he will be with Isa at that time, he'll nominate himself and say, I'll go down, knowing that he's going to go down never come back again. So he'll go down and then subhanallah, all he sees that Allah had destroyed Ya'juj or Ma'juj. Allah destroys the entire nation of Ya'juj or Ma'juj. And how does Allah Azza wa Jal destroy this powerful, strong nation with one of his smallest and insignificant and tiny creations? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send upon Ya'juj wa Ma'juj worms. Little worms that if you see it, you'll step on it. Allah will send upon Ya'juj wa Ma'juj little worms that will go to their necks and destroy them. Kill them all. And this is the amazing thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of Allah. Allah will destroy this powerful nation with a very, very tiny, small nation and that's the worms. When he comes down and he sees the entire nation, that nation that dominated and that nation that controlled earth, the entire nation is dead. All he sees is the corpses. All he sees is the corpses of Ya'juj or Ma'juj on the ground. So he goes back to the mountain, calling upon the believers and Isa, Allahu Akbar, Allah had destroyed Ya'juj or Ma'juj. So Isa alayhi salam and the believers will come down from the mountain to experience and witness the entire nation of Ya'juj or Ma'juj have been destroyed. And all they could see is the deceased and dead corpses of Ya'juj or Ma'juj on the surface of this earth. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he says, there will be not even one hand span empty without being contaminated by the corpses and the dirt of Ya'juj or Ma'juj and their bodies. So at that moment, Isa looks, Allahu Akbar, Allah destroyed Ya'juj or Ma'juj. But whereabouts are we going to live? Where are we going to live on? The entire world is filled up with their corpses and their contamination. So Isa alayhi salam will raise his hands to Allah and say, Ya Rab, Ya Allah, we thank you for destroying Ya'juj or Ma'juj. But oh Allah, we ask you that you get rid of their contamination. We ask you that you get rid of their dead bodies. So at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam describes to us, Allah will send birds, their necks are as long as the necks of the camels. They will come and take the corpses and the dead bodies of Ya'juj or Ma'juj and they will be thrown away and casted in a place that Allah knows better. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down the rain in which Allah azza wa jal will clean and purify the entire earth that the land and the surface of this earth will become so clean, so pure, as clear and bright as a mirror. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clean the entire earth and Allah azza wa jal will purify the entire earth from the dirt and the contamination of Ya'juj or Ma'juj. Then Allah azza wa jal will command the ground to plant its crops and plant its vegetables and plant its fruits. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, glad tidings. Glad tidings to those who live during the time of Isa, the son of Maryam. Glad tidings to them. It's a moment of blessing in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless that time and era. And it will be a time that Allah azza wa jal will bless the land and will bless the plants. And that time that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that one pomegranate will be enough for over 12 people. That one fruit will be enough for a clan of people. He says alayhi salatu wa salam, a dairy cow will be enough to feed a tribe. A dairy cow will be enough to feed hundreds of people. That's the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will bless the time of Isa alayhi salam. And then he says alayhi salatu wa salam, after the destroying of Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, after Gog and Magog are destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslims at that time 
will perform Hajj and Umrah and visit Mecca and Medina. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to allow his rituals to be upheld by the believers and the Muslims at that time. And Muslims will visit with the leadership of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus the son of Mary, who will lead a congregation and a delegation of Muslims to visit the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Kaaba. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, By Allah, I could see the son of Maryam, Isa, coming through this road to visit the house of Allah, making talbiyah, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa na'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, as if I could see him coming from this path, he even sallallahu alayhi wa sallam precisely tells us which path, which route that Isa alayhi salam will come through to visit the house of Allah in Mecca, the Kaaba. And he'll be making talbiyah along the side with the believers and they'll perform hajj or umrah. Isa alayhi salam lives on earth, well, during his whole lifespan, many hadiths are said about him, but the majority of the hadiths say seven years, some hadiths say 40 years. We don't know which ones are the most authentic, but according to our majority of our scholars, seven years is what they rest on. After that, there will be khusufat. Now, this is another major sign. There will be swallowings of earths, swallowings. There will be major continents, well, maybe not continents, but large lands that will actually disappear under the earth. They'll be gone, either into the water or they'll be destroyed head over heels. There'll only be dirt left. And the Prophet Sallallahu tells us in the hadiths, سَيَكُونُ بَعْدِي خَسْفٌ بِالْمَشْرِقِ After me, after the Prophet Sallallahu death, there will be a swallowing of earth in somewhere in the eastern region, eastern to Medina. وَخَسْفٌ بِالْمَغْرِبِ And in the west of Medina, somewhere there. وَخَسْفٌ فِي جَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ And there will be also a swallowing of the earth in the lands of the Arab, the Arab Peninsula. So Allahu A'lam what will happen in that time. And there will be righteous people who also go in these landslides. If you like, there'll be righteous people, but that's because, listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, إِذَا أَكْثَرَ أَهْلُهَا الْخَبَثِ One companion said, Ya Rasulullah, the earth will swallow the people, even if among them there are righteous people. He said, yes, if its people start to do too much immorality and indecency and all of those things. And we have that today. You can see it a lot in the eastern regions, you can see it a lot in the west. You know, homosexuality and prostitution and all those other khabath. People no longer believe in God and so on and so forth. Then there will be smoke. Smoke will come and it will fill the whole sky. This is another major sign. Allah said in the Quran, Which means, wait until the day comes when the sky will be filled of clear smoke. Everybody in the world will see it. Mubin. Everywhere. Meaning the smoke will cover all the people. It will cover all the people of the earth. And people will say, or Allah says, This will be a day of torment. Allahu A'lam, what kind of a torment or a day that would be? Also among the major signs before the end of the world would be the rising of the sun from where it sets. That day no more repentance will be accepted by anybody as we said. And finally, there will be something called a dab, the beast. It will come out of the earth. Allah knows what it looks like. Tukallimun nas. It will speak to the people that you have disobeyed your Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command. Allah azza wa jal will command a nice breeze, a nice breeze wind that will go under the arms of the believers, that will take their souls, it will take their souls so softly and smoothly, where the believers will all die, and the service of this earth will be left for the disbelievers, for the corrupt people upon them, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the day of judgment will emerge. The only thing after that left is sur, the blowing into the trumpet. Yeah, George, my, George, my brothers and my sisters, it's not a fairy tale story to be told for us to entertain ourselves with. It's a reality and everything in relation to the Day of Judgment and the major signs of the Day of Judgment, whether to be Antichrist or the return of Isa alayhi salam or the beast or the sun rising from the west or the rest of the signs of the Day of Judgment. They're not something for us just to listen to and say to ourselves, wow, that was a very nice story. I really enjoyed it. What have you prepared for that moment? Why have you prepared for that moment? Because let me be clear about it, that if you want to prepare yourself during that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the major signs take place, I'm sorry to say to you, but it's too late. It's way too late. You can't study on the gates or the doors or the entrance of the exam and say, now I'm going to study my chemistry or, my, or study my English or study my maths. You need to be well prepared, well versed 
before you enter the exam and before the exam arrives what will really help you at that time is your iman and your iman is not something that you could gain or collect or purchase within one day and night it's something that you need to prepare yourself from now and at the same time on another token speaking about the day of judgment some of us sometimes fall into the trap of the shaitan in which we become so despondent we become so despondent this hopelessness that we start having that Allah Azza wa Jal will not change this world until Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends al-Mahdi wa until Allah azza wa jal sends Isa alayhi salam sometimes we become so despondent sometimes we become so despaired that we say to ourselves there is no hope in this ummah there is no hope in this world until Isa alayhi salam comes or until the Mahdi comes you are wrong this is from the shaitan you should aim and try and achieve the best that you could achieve in this world because if you're gonna wait for the Mahdi to come people in the past for the last 1000 years they've been waiting for the Mahdi to come and Mahdi hasn't even came yet so don't wait for the Mahdi to come and don't wait for the day of judgment to come and don't wait for the major signs of the day of judgment to emerge and occur as a Muslim I must live my day-to-day -day life and live in this world as if I'm living in this world forever and at the same time live my hereafter as if I'm dying tomorrow this is the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have in our life and the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam